Hey guys, I'm Carrie Pena and welcome to In The Moment, our weekly talk show focused on how to live a better life on all levels. I'm here now with my co-host, Gally Ackenblit, who is the founder of Networking Phoenix, and Zenobia Mertel, who is a life and style columnist for InspiredMedia360.com. And in the moment with us today, our guest co-host, a woman who is recognized as one of the top nonprofit leaders in the Valley, the CEO of Florence Crittenton, Dr. Kelly Warren. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was really thanks. excited to get you on the show, especially today of all days, uh, International Women's Day. Yes. So I want to start by talking a little bit about this. People in dozens of countries all over the world will observe International Women's Day, a day that for more than a century has been set aside to celebrate women's achievements and campaign for gender equality. The hashtag is Be Bold mm -hmm. for Change. What does that mean to you, Dr. Warren? You work with, yeah. with girls, yes. uh, thousands of them, to improve their lives. Many of them have come from abused, neglected, terrible situations. Mm -hmm. What does Be Bold for Change mean to you? I think the um, support of girls starts at a young age. So at Florence Crittenton, we have girls as young as 10 to age uh, 25. And I think the boldness is around their education, um, claiming their voices, and really identifying what they want to do with their lives. And part of our job is to foster that. And so despite what they've been through, the bad stories, um, the neglect sometimes, abuse, at the end of the day, they have purpose. And to me, um, they need to boldly walk in that. So giving them the tools, the resources, and the voice to do so. I love that, boldly walking in your purpose. Right, and yeah. Gelly was telling us before um, we started the show uh, about what this means in Russia. Yeah. Explain that, Gally. Yeah, this is a huge holiday in Russia. So I, I, I was born there, and th this was like, we celebrate our mothers, our grandmothers, um, aunts, the, any women, and the men, like everybody is just rallies around this holiday, and all the women just feel so special that day. So it's interesting to see the perspective of how it's uh, celebrated here in the U.S. versus in Russia. So I made sure to text my mom, happy March 8th, that, that's what they call it, you know, to acknowledge that. So yeah. Um, Zenobia, what does it mean to you? Be bold for change. I like to think of the stories and the women before us, mm -hmm. too, with the, the change that's happened through the years, although there's so much more work to go, the little victories mm -hmm. along the way, and the stories of those women that we can take along with us in our journey and pass down to our kids, too. It is That is really important. And with that said, I want to I wanna talk to you, Dr. Warren, about Florence Crinton. But first, I want you to share with the audience a little bit about your story, because you have a personal story mm -hmm. that is very powerful. Um, you grew up in Columbus, Ohio, yes. and you were someone who was raised to believe that you could go into the world and you could make the world your oyster. Well, at the end of the day, I had a loving family that taught me um, that really this life is mine. And despite how the world sees me, what the news says about people that look like me, at the end of the day, I'm beautiful just the way I am. And I had people celebrate me. I had great examples in my family, really showing me the power of a woman and her strength. And there was a lot of people in my neighborhood who went a different route um, and who outcomes were not so great. But through education, support, and a lot of wonderful examples of girl power, I was able to really uh, focus on education and get to graduate school. Uh, I received a doctorate in clinical psychology. I started in juvenile justice, which scared my entire family. Like, <laughs> what? You went to school eight years and you're going to work in justice? But I found a great need to be an advocate for vulnerable populations mm -hmm. like girls and women and to speak on their behalf and provide services and encouragement for those individuals. What's surprising is I thought I was going to be a uh, ballet dancer and an actress and <laughs> that's what I wanted to do, but I love to shop, so I thought, <laughs> Mom, you're right. Go to school, get your education, and then you can buy all the shoes you like. <laughs> right. You always have great right. shoes. You've risen up to be a, a, such a well-regarded CEO, and uh, it strikes me that you know you have this sense of confidence. Um, you're, you're such a loving person. You have this sense of confidence. Did you always feel that from a young age? I mean, because now you're tasked with trying to teach girls mm -hmm. to find their self-confidence. Was that something innate in you? Um, um, unfortunately, at a very young age, I loved myself because my mom and my family just taught me to be proud of who I am. I went, you know, on to college and it was a historically black college where I saw examples of powerful women doing great things and I aspired to do something with my life. And so I would walk to school with a briefcase and high heels <laughs> oh, I love it. and people would taunt me, <laughs> but I loved it. My grandmother, Warren, bought me a 
briefcase, and in high school, I had a briefcase. Fabulous. And I had high heels yeah. on in high school. <laughs> and so I just really learned that um, I'm just something um, purposeful in this world. And I just felt proud to be who, you know, the creator made me. And I never felt bad about my um, appearance, you know, anything about me. My mother and family just taught me to just really embrace who you are, that we're all unique beings and we have a, a mighty work to do. And so that's been kind of the way I've walked through life. And being a woman in leadership, um, and I, I've done most of my professional work in juvenile justice, it is not easy. Yeah. And not everyone thinks that that door should be open for you and not everyone thinks that you're deserving. But I didn't let what they think about me deter me for what I think my purpose is. What I'm trying to pour into the girls is you write your own story. Don't allow the world to tell you who you are, whose you are. Um, walk with purpose, identify why you were uniquely created and move beyond your past. And so even the hurdles that I've been through, the mean people who thought of me in different ways, I think it sharpened me and helped me to get prepared what was next and then next and then next for my life. You know, it, it strikes me, I, I, I'm obsessed with The Voice. That's one of the TV shows <laughs> that I love. Yeah. So I was telling Z that I watched the other day and, and you sort of remind me of this moment that stood out to me. Um, Blake Shelton turns to Alicia Keys and says, you know, I'm trying to get in your head. And she looks at him and she goes, my head is ungettable. Ooh. I mean, it just, you know, she has yeah. such a strong sense of self and you can see that about Alicia Keys, mm -hmm. you can see that about yourself as well. So when you lead an organization, a nonprofit like Florence Crittenton, and you have really the fate of so many girls riding on you, uh, what is that like? And what do you think you try to instill in them to really help them turn the corner and show them that there's a whole world out there that they can go out and try to conquer themselves? I think the best part of my job is the girls. And so while they feel like I'm giving them something, they're doing so much for me. And I don't take it for granted. If we can touch one life, uh, direct a girl differently, instill some hope, um, show her that she is special despite what she's been through, I think that is so critical. And I'm just amazed that I've been chosen to do that. So I humbly take the position very seriously. I become their voice and advocate. And I want to make sure that I seize every teachable moment. So whenever girls are in my presence, I want them to learn from me. I want to practice um, what we're saying in our mission and our vision and our core values centered all around girls and their empowerment. And so I know I'm being watched, but um, it's authentic for me. I would never come to an organization if their mission didn't resonate with my personal philosophy. Because you want to live a purpose-driven exactly. life. Exactly. So for folks who don't know, uh, we have about a minute left in this segment, um, just touch on what the, the mission statement of Flowcrit mm -hmm. is. It's been around for 120 years. Yes. It's such a highly regarded organization. I was um, so proud to be the MC for your Teaming Up yes. for Girls, the big annual um, luncheon where you bring in major speakers. I interviewed Elizabeth Smart mm -hmm. and some incredible people through that event. Um, so just tell the audience a little bit more about Flowcrit and what you guys are doing every day. Well, our mission is centered around providing safety, hope, and opportunity to every girl whose life we touch. And that doesn't matter what her background is, her uh, socioeconomic status, her race, ethnicity, whoever walks through that door is deserving. So every year our community uh, rallies with us um, and we do a major event every March. And we try to bring a, a person to the event that speaks to and um, has an experience that resonates with the realities of our girls so we can bring attention to this cause. But our community is amazing, and they rally with us to raise money um, for the delivery of service. We have so many opportunities to touch these girls, and so our community and this event is our signature fundraiser. And every year, just like the year with Elizabeth Smart, not only touches the girls' lives, motivates them. Stories of resiliency are so important for all of us, but every year I am empowered more to walk in my purpose as well. Yeah, and that's so important, um, and this leads right into our Thrive segment. So Gelly will yeah. be talking to us today about mentorship because it can really bring a light bulb moment where you see someone and you identify with them some part of their story and you think, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So Gal, what you're going to talk about yeah. today is how um, looking for mentors, it really never has to stop because we mm -hmm. can always right. be evolving in yeah. our life. How do we do that? 
Well, we should always be evolving, not just could, but absolutely be. And so the thing is, is it doesn't matter which phase in life you're at, you could always find somebody to motivate you and push mm -hmm. you forward. So one of the things I t tell people is that you don't even have to personally know your mentors in order for them to be your mentor. So for instance, there are so many amazing thought leaders that put out great content daily, right? Um, a few of my favorites, Lewis House. He's got a podcast called The School of Greatness. And not only is Lewis amazing, but he interviews some of the most amazing people around the world. And so you can resonate, you can find who you resonate with and then start following them on Instagram or whatever the case may be. Another podcast I listen to regularly is um, Matt Gottesman's uh, Hustle Deal Flow. Mm. Um, and so again, he talks about the journey of um, entrepreneurs and it resonates with me because I'm an entrepreneur. Um, the other thing is that you don't actually, or if you do want to have somebody mentor you um, that you know personally, just ask them. And a lot of times we're afraid to ask, mm -hmm. but people are so happy to actually mentor us along. So yeah. ask. Mm -hmm. And then the last point is don't discount your peers, right? Because again, as you're going through life mm -hmm. in different phases, there are people around you that are going to be in your same boat and they can help you like maybe they just solve something you're going through and they can help you move through that process yeah and I like the the concept of constantly evolving never feeling like okay I'm I'm now the head of this you know I'm, I'm a main news anchor I always am seeking people to learn from mm -hmm. and to grow from so I think yeah. those are such great tips and just quickly how important do you think it is for the girls to have mentors, even if it's someone who shows them just, hey, I care about you. It's critical in their journey of recovery, and that we have a, a, a mentoring program, but each of our staff members, in my opinion, serve as mentors because they're watching us, and yeah. we're the models for them. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important for all of us to have a positive female in our lives, uh, an accountability partner, someone that is encouraging and that can keep us on our right accountability track. Accountability partner, right. I love yes. that. Yes. Uh, yes. Zenobia, we're gonna talk in just a second about your big rock and roll moment. Okay. Uh, but first, I want to uh, share a story from my podcast. Each week on Friday, I do a podcast, Carrie Pena Reports. And on that uh, show, I sit down with people who are highly inspirational um, and have incredible stories to share. Um, I recently talked to Matt Phillips, who is a former baseball player, and he now teaches business leaders how to become more mentally tough. Take a listen. Where do you begin and how do you teach people to be more mentally tough? Where I start with everybody is at their core foundation. And I have this concept called build your stand. And it's actually based off the Navy SEAL ethos. I, I have not been a member of the military, but if people watching and listening today, if you have not read the Navy SEAL ethos, I urge you to go please Google it right now and look for it and read it. It's one of the most powerful statements that I've ever read in my life. You start to get a glimpse into how the best of the best approach their job and you start hearing phrases of like, I do not quit, we don't give up, it's country and team before self, just powerful statements that, that rock them to their core. So when they are faced with that adversity in their life, they are solid in why they're there, they understand what they're there to, to accomplish, and they go get after it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, that's the mindset of just unbelievable uh, people that do very dangerous things on a daily basis. So what I do in my business is really set that foundation with everybody and say, make, let's make sure our core is good, that we know why we're here, what we're doing, the principles and values that are driving our life, what are the actions and behaviors that are driving our daily decisions. Let's make sure that core is there because then we can start building from there. And you can see that entire interview. It's a really great interview on inspiredmedia360.com. So what does mental strength, mental toughness mean to you guys? Z? Well, I think mental mental strength means perseverance, really, because we all have a journey that goes like this, and it's in the down times that we have to talk to ourselves and stay sharp and come back up. Yeah, and, and for you, Dr. Warren? For me, I think you really have to watch your thinking, and you have to be careful what things you pay attention to, what you read, because all of those things influence and shape kind of how you see the world. Not to get too psychological, but the self-talk matters. He's really big on self-talk. Yes, oh, my computer's dinging. Let me turn that down. Oh, my. Um, so, yeah. Gal, you, you coach business leaders, so yeah. quickly weigh in on this. To me, it's about pushing through because you're going to have those down moments. We all do, but it's, you know, you just have to tell yourself, this is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get through it, and there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, and then there's going to be another dip. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. so you have to prep yourself, and that's just how it goes. Yeah, preparation. Matt Phillips is really yeah. big on preparation. One of the things he says in that interview is he tells big business leaders, CEOs, wake up 15 minutes earlier each day. Uh -huh. Do whatever you want to do with it. 
meditate, read, mm -hmm. uh, sit down and r relax, have breakfast with your kids. He says that it has been transformative to a lot of the people who he's given that advice to. That's just 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, so some, some are great takeaways there. Now it is time to check out Zenobia's vibe. We've been talking about Rock the District and we love this story so much yes. because um, we want to encourage and support the arts and music mm -hmm. in our community and around the country. Um, so Zenobia was the MC for this great event, Rock the District. First, I want to give you guys a, a little bit of a look at that event. Yeah, come on! Who knows this song? It was massively successful. Congratulations, Thank Zenobia, you. and to all of those who put this event on. So tell us about it. Okay, the event was rocking. I have to tell you, it was so fun. So in its eighth year, this was the biggest year they've ever had. They raised, so they surpassed their goal, more than $38,000. All that money is going to go right into grants, which will be applied to the Cave Creek Unified School District's programs across the board for education, arts, technology. It's such a big deal at this school because because this uh, school district is unique in where they haven't passed overrides and bonds. So this is a story about community coming together and doing what they need to do to help the kids. I, it was such a good time. It's, it wasn't your average talent show. It was big time acts. Some of the acts are going on to LA. One's going to Whiskey A Go Go to perform soon. Another was named one of the best top 10 Metro Phoenix ba bands under 21. So it was fabulous. The crowd was rocking. It was so fun and it went long and nobody left. Everyone had a great time. They raised good money and they're so jazzed about doing it again. And many of the volunteers, donors, and people that attended don't even have kids in the school district. Oh, that's so, so awesome. That's I love testament. to see community coming yes. together like that. Dr. Warren, how important do you think uh, music is uh, to, to our souls for, for, these, for these children? You deal with so many girls who come to you in really, really tough circumstances. I think we um, underestimate the impact of the arts and that freedom to express yourself mm -hmm. and many of our girls who have struggled with trauma and are dealing with some painful memories they use music to kind of escape mm -hmm. or they use arts and dance to have the freedom to just be and relax and so I believe it's critical and I don't think we invest enough into the arts on behalf of our young people. The freedom to just be. Yeah. I love it. So you know good. who's always got the freedom to just be? David Lux, one of <laughs> our contributors. Right. Uh, he goes out every Saturday to lunch with his mom so we call this segment Lunch with Mom, very apropos. <laughs> yes. um, he takes us along for the ride at kind of doing informal mm -hmm. restaurant reviews. So David writes, this Saturday Mama Lux and I went to devour. I ate everything in sight, no <laughs> joke. It is one of my favorite events of the year put on by the incomparable Kimber Lanning and her team at Local First. So Devour is an annual event hosted by the Phoenix Art Museum, Local First Arizona, and the Devour Phoenix Restaurant Coalition. The point is to further Phoenix as a dining destination worthy of international prestige. Uh, Phoenix is getting a lot of uh, well. big ups right. in terms of the For restaurant sure. right. scene, right. Mm -hmm. you know, so David kind of takes us out and about and he texted me, said my scale was very mad at me <laughs> after going to devour. So thank you so much, David Lux. Now it is time that we go out with our intern. Today we want to introduce you to our newest intern, Haley. We're going to show you a picture of Haley. She was out with uh, actually with Zenobia at that event. Yes. Um, she's doing such a great job for us. So one of her assignments is to go out and talk to millennials about what's on their mind. We do not like to get uh, uber political on this show. I just told her, talk to the to your friends about what's on their mind. So she asked them kind of their hopes and fears for Donald Trump. And here's what some of them said. Politics is a very big issue among millennials today. Hi, Linda. Hi. So can you tell us your biggest fear for this presidency? My biggest fear for this presidency is that the credibility for the executive branch will be dismantled and the, the checks and balances the way that the legislative and the judicial branch are set up are just gonna crumble. The biggest fear is people who are too partisan to be pragmatic and do its best in the country, mm -hmm. care more about their team than us. All right, and what's your biggest hope for this presidency? A big, beautiful wall. <laughs> My biggest fear for the presidency would be this continued chaos. It doesn't appear to be anybody really in charge of the White House, so we're getting very uh, chaotic policy and nothing seems to be getting done effectively, which if this continues over the next four years, uh, government will be uh, rendered useless. Uh, we will 
the, the executive branch will, will just simply fail and the country will suffer. Uh, my biggest hope for the presidency would be, at the very least, some of Donald Trump's more orthodox picks perhaps for cabinet posts um, and various things, uh, perhaps do at the very least shake things up. So we do want to end uh, on a hopeful note, and that's why I ended with that last soundbite, because of course we all want everyone to be successful mm -hmm. and, and to have a sense of unity. Dr. Warren, thank you so much for being here today. What is the one message you'd like to leave the audience with? You are such a great example of achieving your dreams and then some, and you're still going. Um, what kind of advice do you want to give people who maybe trying to figure out what their dreams are or how, how to reach them? I just think live. You know, when I leave this earth, I, I want my tombstone to say she lived. I think enjoy every moment. Even the uh, situations that are not so great, still live and appreciate life. And I think that's just what I'm doing. I'm living and I'm trying to serve others. And it's pretty cool. And you're doing it all of it while wearing amazing <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Thank them. you so much. Thank really you. appreciate Thank it. You. And best of luck at your event this year. I know you guys will knock it out of the park. You always do. That's going to do it for us, guys. Thank you so much for being here. We hope that you will join us every week for In the Moment. The show drops every Wednesday. And starting next Wednesday, we will be doing a Facebook Live behind Ooh. the scenes. If we can all Yay. get to the set early <laughs> enough to make that happen, we will start Facebooking Live behind the scenes because we do a little bit of a rap challenge when we so do our mic challenge. Yeah. Uh, our mission basically is to motivate and inspire you to go out there and live your best life. Uh, you can go to inspiredmedia360.com to find out more information. You can read all of Zenobia's columns, Z Life. You can also connect with us on YouTube and Facebook at Inspired Media. That's going to do it for us. We hope you go out there and live in the moment. Take care, everyone. Bye.